And here we go. Hey there, Dennis. How's it going today? I'm doing very well, Craig. How about yourself? Uh, doing just fantastic. Welcome, everybody, to our weekly MLM Mastermind training. I'm Craig Pelliquin. And I'm Dennis Wilson. And uh, we'll get uh, some fun stuff to share with you today. Man, we are going to get into follow-up, 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 and more follow-up. You mean you got to follow up in this business? Yeah, well, well, you don't have to. Somebody, somebody on Facebook sent me a, 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 a whole thing about I just got to buy this system and put push a button and it's going to make me three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, or even four thousand dollars a week. Oh, that's not automatic. That's automagic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not real. No, probably not. If it was real, then I guess we wouldn't have anybody attending our training because everyone would be rich in MLM. <laughs> we, would, we wouldn't be doing any training. <laughs> we would, yeah, buy this magic right, system. This magic system. That's right. Well, there are the, people making money on the magic system. Well, well, you know, the people selling it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be uh, talking about follow-up. Uh, we're going to go through some uh, techniques on follow-up. What is follow-up? The kinds of follow-up that are required to build your MLM business. And then we're going to show, that's going to be the first part of our presentation. Yeah. And then we're going to show you how to follow up using the hour day system. That's right. So first part is practical knowledge of follow up and all of the different types and different ways you should be following up or you could be following up. Or if you want to be really, really good, you must be following up. And uh, yeah, certainly then the, the we'll, we'll break we'll break off into actually showing how hour a day can do that for you. So right now, sit back and enjoy. And we're going to show you all you could ever want to know about follow up. There you go. So let me just uh, bring out a little PowerPoint presentation I got going here, Dennis. That's going to make life a little bit easier for us. Perfect. So secrets to effortless follow up. Did you know that 79, fun fact, 79% of leads are never followed up on? You know, I, I don't know if I knew that it was 79%, but I knew that it was a lot. I, I might have even thought that it was more like, well, you know what? I think that's probably not an MLM stat. I think in MLM, it's probably closer 99. to 99.9. <laughs> there we go. So the types of MLM follow-up. We've got a pre-prospecting. We're just going to go over the different types. we got a post-prospecting. We've got product interest. we got business interest. And we've got mentoring. Right. And a okay. secret one that we don't put on the menu. And then training. All right. And then yeah. the secret one that we don't put on the menu. Of course. Then we have a, do have a secret <laughs> one. But let's let's go into the different types of follow-ups so everybody understands what they are. Let's break them down. Let's do it. So let's talk about pre-prospecting follow-up. All right. So what is what is pre-prospecting, Dennis? I mean, pre-prospecting is when you're engaged in trying to get somebody to take a look at your first level of information or possibly in the case of pre-pre-prospecting, your really, really basic information to then get them to the next information. So pre-prospecting is all about, hey, I found this thing that's cool. I don't know if it's for you or not. Would you mind taking five minutes to take a look at my auto prospecting system? Hey, did you look at my auto prospecting system? Hey, did you look at my auto prospecting system? Hey, did you look at my auto prospecting system? <laughs> okay. Or did okay. you look at my product? My product? Right. Yeah. Okay. So that would be pre-prospecting to some kind of a system or to the website or to a bunch of other things. Got it. So it's what you say to someone who you identified already as a potential prospect. Right. So this is the initial communications that you can have with somebody. Um, and it could be the follow-up required to get a prospect to look right. at that information. So That's first you're going to say, about. found something cool. And then, hey, did you look at Hey, did you look at Hey, did you? Of course, much more creative than that. But yeah. that's essentially pre-prospecting. Right, and this can come from your warm market list, and if you've uh, been part of any of our trainings in the past or downloading the apps, this uh, could be uh, that you manually go create on a piece yep. of paper or download the MLM List Creator app and then upload the top 30 into the hour, into day. The hour a day, and everything's made easy for you. Yeah. Or it could be from, from last week, I taught my, my MLM LinkedIn uh, system. Yep. Uh, that you can go and use, and so it could be making pre-connections. Hang on, let's clarify. On LinkedIn. That was the Craig Pelican MLM LinkedIn system. Very specific about how to prospect on LinkedIn. Yes. So yes, and in the in the LinkedIn lingo, this is about where you're just trying to get the person to connect with you. So you're not sending any company specific information. So this is why I like to say pre pre prospecting, because this is really. This is really just getting permission to send them something at all. Not even saying, hey, I sent you something. Did you look yet? This is like, like, can we be friends so I can send you something? Right. Got it. And this also could be leads uh, from advertising or a list purchase. I mean, yep. We've done it in the past. I don't highly recommend it. I don't recommend lead purchase. You're better off to generate your own through a sales funnel so that they're yours. Um, purchasing leads. I've seen lots of list brokers make a lot of money selling leads. Yeah. I haven't seen a lot of members consistently make money selling leads. 
Right. Or, sorry, buying leads. So, so let's talk about uh, post prospecting follow up then. So that's pre prospecting. Yeah. So we've done pre prospecting and we've done pre pre prospecting. So now we want to talk about post prospecting. So right. this is now that you looked. Well, see, now things get crazy, right? Because we got the post prospecting on if they connected with you on LinkedIn. Um, which was the sort of pre-prospecting to post-prospecting. But in a normal situation, you've sent them some general information. So now you're basically, they've looked at your information and it could have been a simple sales funnel. It might've been, they attended your webinar or business presentation. They might've just looked at your corporate website uh, or a conference call. Right. So hang on, sorry, I went way too yeah, fast. Yeah, go back, so, go back. Too fast. I went too fast. Hold okay. the horse. So there we go. So really that's what it's all about. Post-prospecting is you've got somebody that is, looked at your information right so, so whether that's, that's level one information or level two information then that would be a different post prospect right. but you got to follow up based on what they've looked at now and, right. and you need to know what that follow-up is that could be automated follow-up it can be semi-automated follow-up it could be picking up a phone follow-up we're gonna text message. We'll, we'll go into more details so what are they just interested in the product because that does happen well, yeah, and you need to be prepared that if they only have product interest follow-up, then that's how you follow up with them. They can't say, I'm only interested in the product, and then you go hit them with the business. Like doesn't, you, doesn't work. They've all, remember, at this point, they've already seen your product and business information and said, yes, based on what I've seen and heard so far, I'd like to try the product. Got okay, it. let's be clear. So here is specific, specific product info. So if you're in a company that has 293 products, then you might actually have a follow-up series for each and every one of them or each category of products or something. So it could be very, very granular at this stage, or it could just be general. Hey, we do health and wellness, and here's why you might want to get some of them. Yeah. I would think at this point you're getting more to the specific, because they've said, I've seen your presentation, I know what your product's about, and I want yeah. information about blah. And we say product, we do mean products or services Or services, here. of because, course. Because the services are, are a product right and uh, sometimes uh, this is where now a sampling offer can come in now I mean there's there's ways to do sampling and there's ways not to do sampling yeah, the best way to do sampling is paid for sampling so I don't really believe in giving samples away because it increases the cost of business too much but if you're doing a paid for sampling then you'd want to get the sampling out to the person because they've said they want it which means now you need to have a follow-up series on the fact that they took a sample because you need to say, how was the sample? All yeah. that kind of follow-up. That's right. So you're also going to have this. So after the product sale, you're going to have a follow-up on that. And you're going to have one, did you use the product? So you send well, it out to them. They make the sale. I mean, how many people yeah. get that box and they don't open the box? There is the biggest trick of MLM. If you're going to make a product sale, then you got to remember that your job is to follow up with that product sale to make sure they've used it. If you sent them a box of cleaning materials for their house and you don't follow up to make sure that they take all their cleaning materials that they currently have and replace them with the ones you sent them, they're going to sit in that box until all the old stuff is gone. Same as nutritional supplements, same as skincare. Yeah. You need to follow up in a method that makes them use your darn products. Making the sales not enough. You need to get them to use them. A great way to do that is, is most companies will have software that will uh, let you know when the products arrive, be tracking, something like that. You should know when your, pro when your prospect is getting that product. Go the extra mile, set it up on a tracking so you're informed the minute it arrives in their mailbox and then phone your prospect and say, hey, I see, I just got notified by UPS or whoever is sending it to FedEx that your product is in the mailbox. Go get the box now, I'll wait on the phone. Yeah, and if you're not that advanced, then set yourself a reminder with a Google Calendar that reminds you that, hey, it's six days they should have their product by now, but do something to make sure as soon as it gets there, while they're excited, you get them to using it instead of, oh no, we're gonna put it over to the side and use it when my old stuff run, runs out. Yeah, that happens all the time. Then how was the product after they've used it? You got to follow up. Used it, you need to follow up on making sure they continue to use it, or if they didn't like it, solve any concerns, get them onto something else. I mean, right. it's it's absolutely important important to follow up after they've used your product to make sure that they want to try another one or buy more of it or whatever. This is professional sales here. Then you'll end up with a customer to distributor conversion follow up. I mean, and they, this becomes really tricky, right? Because if you've shown them a balanced presentation and they've said, I want to be a customer, then I would actually recommend not ever trying to convert them to a distributor. Okay. But if on the other hand, you were doing some kind of a paid sampling offer, where you're actually doing that paid sampling, just hoping to collect a qualified lead, then I'd be pounding on them to convert them to a distributor. So I, I think you gotta be really, really careful. There's a place for customer distributor conversion 
And there's a place where it could actually take a guy that might have stayed to be your customer for a year and make him run away. So you got to be right. careful with that one. It's tricky. Okay. So that was uh, product focused. Now we got to talk about a business interest follow up. So you've done a balanced approach. You showed the product, you showed the business, and they've indicated now they're interested in the business. So there's different ways that you're going to follow up with business interest based on how much money they want to earn in the business. So what is their level of interest at, as a business level? Do they want to make just enough money for some free products? You're going to follow up differently than somebody that wants to make $1,000 a month or wants to have a replacement income or wants to double their income or oh, wants unlimited, unlimited income. income. You're like not going to follow one. up the same with somebody that wants free products and then somebody wants to make unlimited income and jump into the business on a full-time basis. And, 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 and you know, it could be as subtle as the exact same series, but saying like, hey, if you're looking to earn enough for free products, you know, you need to put about an hour a week into your business. You need to go make 10 connections on LinkedIn a week to do that, to find enough customers, to earn enough retail profit for your products to be free versus you want to earn up to a thousand a month. Well, now you're gonna need to put in three hours a week and you're gonna need to get 30 LinkedIn, con you know, like it could be literally the same information changed ever so slightly, but you'll get so much more reaction and retention and interest. If what they said they were interested in, they start getting followed up with in a way that makes sense to what they said, instead right. of the generic, oh, you wanna make a gazillion dollars, let's use that approach, because everyone likes that, right? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work if you need to be specific. And, and a lot of the systems are now uh, made so that you can follow up and be a lot more concise with your follow-up based on how they answer the questions. Well, I don't know if a lot of them are, but an hour a day certainly is. But <laughs> I appreciate that. There You're being you nice to the other ones. So mentoring follow-up, uh, this this is actually really a key. I mean, we're here uh, and we talk about it. When you're getting out there on social media and you're meeting people, you want to make friends first. Yep. When somebody says that they're focused, don't be the jerk MLM -er that everybody hates and then you know, oh, let me show you mine, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Let me try to, you know, uh, let me try to chip at your belief in your company. Oh, right. Let me share all these bad things that I've heard on the on the internet. Don't be that person. No. You're right. Make friends first and then follow up in a caring manner. Uh, because they're they're focused. They're in MLM, they're focused. So now be respectful, non-prospecting, make friends first approach. This is so important. Sure. And now this is long term. When you connect with somebody and you're not in their face. I mean, if you're connected on LinkedIn using my system, you're going to see they're already in a company. Mm -hmm. You can tell how long they've been in the company. If they've been in the company for four, five, six, seven years, they're probably pretty focused. Or they're not doing anything. Either way, they're probably not your prospect. <laughs> right? So so you, you want to share generic MLM tips and tools like the hour, hour a day system. free forever auto prospecting system. Yeah, go right. we'll figure. You're going to share generic uh, industry articles. Uh, and that's just said news, not new. Uh, non-company specific. Well, and again, I think company specific's okay, but make sure that whatever you're talking about is something like the, the new skin settlement or some very timely topical news. And the one person on my list that I would not share the new skin uh, the settlement, or sorry, Herbalife, pardon me, new skin, I'm sorry, the Herbalife settlement with is someone in Herbalife. So in other words, don't try to break someone's belief when they said they're focused right yeah. stay away from it talk about stuff that isn't about their company that isn't about your company if you're going to talk about stuff in general that way you can always be assured that you don't have an ulterior motive right and then really important once you got somebody in joined in the business wants to do it you got to have a training follow-up and that That's training follow-up is going to is going to once again uh, mirror their the business, business level That's yeah right. exactly their business so based upon their income desire you're going to follow up differently with somebody that just wants to earn enough for free products then somebody that wants to be a, you know an unlimited business builder have the system teach the system the system the system have the system, a system the system that's right right our day has a great email uh, mlm series that you created dennis yeah. fantastic join it and share it with your downline you can get the uh uh just go to twt.bz here in canada canadian yes. zbz for you americans slash h-a-d-n-l so it's our uh, day newsletter in case you right. understand oh it's not yeah. hadnal no. I thought it was misspelled handle, like really misspelled handle. So, uh, but training is so important. And it's where a lot of people think. They think that as soon as you sign somebody up, your, your, your work is finished. Now your job begins. And that's where it gets And remember, started. this newsletter is completely non-denominational. 
It doesn't prospect for anything. The only thing it does talk about when it does talk about something is hour a day and the fact that it's free. So you're completely safe to sign up to it. You're not going to be prospected. There's no end game other than hour a day, a free system. There you go. Now we're going to talk about the unfollow up follow ups. Okay. And I like these because these are kind of <laughs> the most fun. These are kind of fun. So what are you talking about, Dennis, with unfollow up follow ups? Well, birthday email. Okay. It's not technically a follow-up, but depending how you worded your happy birthday email, it'll probably be a lot more effective than your generic Facebook post. Yeah, that's, that's that true. That says simply happy birthday. Right, as it says here on the holiday, so Merry Christmas, Easter follow-up, Hanukkah, New Year's, Thanksgiving. Or whatever the, country. Friends what, Day, you know. Yeah, Family <laughs> Day, whatever holidays there are in your country and culture. You can be using every one of those as an excuse to just get in someone's face. And this isn't to get in, hey, Merry Christmas, have you looked at my company yet? You wanna join my business or are we gonna get rich together? This is, hey, Merry Christmas from Dennis. Uh, and um, maybe, maybe, maybe you slip in a URL to your prospecting system after you've said all the nice things and pretty pictures. All right, now you've done some really interesting things in, in follow up uh, for these next two ones, hobbies. Alcoholic drink preference. Yeah, you know. So maybe you can get a little bit more specific on that, Dennis. Yeah, so, I mean, I like to try to learn about people. Um, and as I, as I learn more about people, I like to track that information so that I can put them into actual series. So if I find out that someone likes hockey, my very next question is, do you play or do you watch? Because the way you would react to a player versus a watcher is totally different, right? I can easily make someone who watches happy in hockey because I can just send them a top 10 funniest hockey videos or top 10 greatest shots videos or something. Yeah. I can do something randomly to a hockey fan quite easily. To a hockey player, it becomes a bit more difficult. I'm gonna have to go do a little bit of studying to find out what kind of things a hockey player is interested in. But then I could follow up with them. So if I learned at, yeah. a, <laughs> if I learned at an event that someone was a hockey fan, I'd pop them into my hockey fan series, and that series actually would be set to some random number delay, like 39 days. 39 whole days, I'm not gonna send them a thing, and then it's gonna send out, hey, you know, when we met at that whatever, whatever, um, you had said you were a hockey fan. Hey, have you ever seen this? I just tripped across it online. It's this great series of videos on YouTube about like the craziest goals ever scored. And I'll send that out to them. And the traction I get on it's unbelievable. My other, my other one, besides hobbies, is I also do it for alcohol. So if I find out that they're a non-drinker, then I ask them 39 days, 43 days, 52 days, 29 days, some random number of days later, hey, you know what, I'm going to a friend of mine's house and he's a non-drinker. When we met, you had suggested that you didn't drink alcohol. Do you have any sort of mocktails or some, something that's sort of your go-to thing that I could maybe you know take there or teach them to make or have available there at, at this dinner party I'm going to. Like, do you have any suggestions? And of course, then you get a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And none of this is loading them down with what I do. This is all just sort of engagement. Like with these types of things, I don't put anything about my business. I don't even put in my signature line, my URL. Right. This is just like as if I was thinking about them very, very personally and I typed them on a note, I'm likely to leave a spelling error in these ones, Craig. They, you can do that. Or or punctuation or, problems. Or, yeah, yes, you can do that. Yes. Non-capitalization. Non-capitalization. Oh, there you go. So the idea here is just to create an engagement, to make them think that I'm a pretty nice guy and that I was pretty smart and I remembered stuff. And, and I'm, I'm not a pretty smart guy. And that's why when I use hour a day to track all this stuff, I become one because it remembers all the things that I forget. See, I have a really, really great memory, Craig. It's just really, really short. Really, really short. It's long enough to get the data tracked in hour a day, so I don't need that's to remember good. it myself. So, and and, and the same thing you, you talk about uh, with hobbies and, uh, and and that works, or hobbies you do with, with alcohol, uh, with drinks too. I mean, if you're at a, uh, at a social situation where you're meeting somebody, uh, you use the app when you're doing that because you, yes, you're right. actually because uh, our data has a really cool app that you can download yep. and when you're talking to them at the end you can ask them what kind of you drink so you know if they drink wine red or white That's right. beer do they like craft beer and put all these things in there and then create these specific email follow-ups that seem random but they're, they're not all, and they're already designed you've already designed all these emails they're, they're all boxes. designed and, and I'll be honest here's you know people overthink stuff so what I did was I wrote one series about craft beer and then I went to my personal assistant and I said, now I need you to go and write a series for tequila, vodka, uh, red wine, white wine, and every kind of alcohol I could think of and mocktails. And 
my personal assistant ran off and just duplicated all those series, changed some words out, found a different video or different brand or different thing to slip in when it was specific, and bada bing, bada boom, we've got all these series set to random follow-up times and days. Uh, that, that well, what's really happened. neat is you even tell people that they're going to get this oh, yeah. when, you, when you and you say, look, you know what, I'm going to put you in a series and they forget about it. Oh yeah, that's and why I do the, it so many days later. When the email when the email does come and they're like, oh my god. First of all, they go, that's really neat. Then they realize it's automated. How often what happens, Craig, is amazing. I get the first email giving me the suggestion or responding to me. And then like 10 minutes later, another one comes up, you got me. You said this was going to happen. I only figured out that it just happened now. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and and it's great to have that semi-automation and the automation to be able to help you do the follow-up. So uh, let's get back into the presentation now. And, uh, and we'll go a little bit further into that. Uh, let's talk about methods of follow-up, okay? Because this is this is really kind of important. There's really four methods. We'll go into the details on them. So you got telephone, autoresponder emails, you got text or SMS, and social media instant messaging. These are really and telephone person to person also. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. you got to you got to speak to somebody. Yeah. Voice then, communication. Let's call it. Yeah. Let's let, let, well, let's go into that one. Let's talk about follow-up. Let's talk okay. about telephone follow-up and the importance of that. So even though you have the ability to use instant messaging, My other non-verbal <laughs> follow-up methods, the phone can make the difference depending on the demographic. You do have to be careful because I know if I try to phone my 22 year old daughter, the chances of her answering are zero. Oh, if I, phone, I got the 20 and the 20, 20 and 22 myself. And uh, if I'm phoning them, they think somebody is dead. Oh yeah, I, I don't get, the they don't answer my phone call, but I get a text back immediately. Is it something important? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why didn't you just answer the phone? It would have been quicker. But it, it can it can set you apart. It can. Right? I I personally make it a goal when I connect with somebody through social media as soon as possible. If if there's to make that meaningful connection. It kind of shows you phone. care because it's harder to do than send a text. Yeah. So it shows you care. It does get you up the list on a lot of people's minds. Yeah, it, it does. Now autoresponder emails, not as good as they used to be. <laughs> you know, it's 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 getting worse and worse. Open rates and times of opening of emails are slipping. I mean, I think the average open time now is three days where it used to be pretty much instant. Um, it's I don't even want to look at how many emails I haven't answered right now on my, on my <laughs> I'm at, I think about 4,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, it can be still effective though, if you micro target. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest key, and that's probably why people don't pay attention to their emails, is I say I'm interested in company ABC, and all I get is generic information about everything that I'm... I said I was interested in company ABC, but I was actually interested in product A, but nobody asked me that, so they're just following me up about product ABC ad nauseum with all their products, and I just get bored. It's not specific, but if they were to say, hey, you said you were interested in this gizmo gadget. Well, you, did you see this article that explains how the use of this gizmo or gadget can help your life or whatever it is? Micro-targeting, so you can actually have an email follow-up that's specific to the information they gave you instead of just general, can bring autoresponder emails back up the list, but it still doesn't make them quicker to be answered, no. or quicker, more quicker to be open. And then your hobby and, and alcohol emails, I mean, those, those are perfect because they don't seem to be, they're not selling anything. They're just yeah. once again, that extra eyeball well, <laughs> and generating interest and making you a human. And don't forget they're written creatively because they specifically say, I'm going to my friend's house this coming weekend. Yeah. So that makes the person when they see them feel they should respond quickly because I'm going to need the information quickly. So, so yeah. yeah. And semi-automated is typically better than completely automated if you can. I mean, the more customized yeah, that like email if is. You, if you've got your generic business blurb all mapped out over 20 emails, and then instead of that just going out automatically by an autoresponder, it actually popped up on your screen and said, okay, you wanted to send Joe this email, and you had the ability to put, hey, Joe, it was great talking the other day about your kid's baseball game and then the business blurb after it, imagine how much more effective it is. Or you said, hey, I looked at your Facebook profile. I love that picture of the pizza, man. I love pizza too. Anything that can get a personal little bit of something yeah. that's relevant and current so they know, you know, it's almost like the when you're on a dating profile, you got to take yeah. your picture with a newspaper showing today's date. Like that can't be Photoshopped. No, there you go. <laughs> so now we'll do uh, text and SMS. This seems to be, uh, you know, a little bit, more effective if, if it's not overused and abused. And, and I think 
if you already know the person and you have a relationship with them, I think texting can work really, really well. But to use texting to go out and pound on people that aren't your friends yet, that you don't know, that you found their phone number somewhere or you bought their phone number, I think you got to be careful. And even with your friends, I mean, do you want to be texting incessantly about anything from any of your friends? Well, guess what? They don't want to be texting incessantly from you. So exactly. yeah, moderation. And again, personalized. The minute it sounds completely like a robot or it could be sent to anyone, you're going to lose them. And there are systems out there. We use uh, Line 2, uh, yes. which you can send text messages from your computer and it looks like it's coming from your phone. And it's and a different can... phone number. So at least you don't have your business and your, your personal tied up. You can, you can take a break by turning off Line 2 notifications, but still get your cell phone notifications for your friends and family. So yeah. And it's, a, it's an inexpensive way to get a second phone number for me being a Canadian working nice. in the United States. I got an American number Ten so I can call. Yeah, it's like, I think by the time in Canada, I think by the time I get all the taxes, it's like $15 Canadian, but uh, is what I get charged. That's about four bucks US. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's about $10 US and uh, everything that I need yep. uh, is there. I can text and I can call from it and people can call me on that number and it rings separately on my phone and it, and it works. That's great. Yeah. Great way to be able to do that. Love it. Um, and it's um, best use texting and SMSing when it's requested. Somebody says the best way to get a hold of me is by text. We add it to our question on MLM software. One of the questions is, how do you want us to communicate? And if they say text, they're dropped into a text series. There you go. And uh, we're just going to finish up here because we're getting to the top of the hour, here, Dennis. Uh, uh, we've got uh, social media instant messaging. Now, this works on a different logic than emails and autoresponders. Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, it needs to be semi-automated. Um, and that's not because software you can buy can't make it automated. It's because your instant messaging platforms and your LinkedIn's and your all of them don't want you automating it. So they don't allow API access. So semi-automated is the best you're going to get, but that's okay because it's a totally different animal, right? Really, unlike email where you're expecting to send a message today and in seven days, another bit of information and nine days, another bit of information, Instant messaging is a bit different. You got to look at it as your series is more to remind you that you might have had a conversation going with this person. So it, it sort of gets you to pick up where you left off almost. So you say you're going to call him back in seven days and your message comes up and says, hey, you got to call Fred. It's been seven days. And you go, oh, man, Fred and I had a great conversation that we dropped four days ago. You're being reminded you did. So at the time that you actually go look at them again, that's where you'll see that you were in conversation. That's when you'll cut and paste that into whatever contact management system you're using so you can keep track of it all. But so instead of it sort of being a, this is what's going to happen on this time frame. it's almost like a, this is to remind you to go look if something happened and if not, send the next piece of information. And if you need to change something at that point, you change it. So it's, it's almost like a reminder to take action on someone you forgot. Yeah. A little bit different method. A little bit different. So uh, that's what we wanted to go over in, in, in the first half of our, of our training is how important follow-up is. There's and all, all the different, different I mean, things you need to follow up for. It's, you know, it's you know, getting a, I mean, this is why most people fail in follow-up because there's a lot that needs to be done. Automating it, semi-automating it, having a system that, that helps you do the follow-up. I mean, it's not so hard to follow if you're only talking to one person. That's right. Okay. It's, you don't really need a system. Okay. <laughs> you can use it on your phone. You can remember right. to call because you only got one person to follow up with. But if you start using some of the approaches that we teach, like going on the LinkedIn and connecting with, you know, maybe five or 10 new people every day. Yeah, think about now, five people a day. You have 150 people in a month. You have 900 people in six months. If you don't have a system, man, you're in trouble. Actually, no, you're in trouble, broke, convinced the business doesn't work or some other or some combination of the above because you can't keep up and you're not going to keep up. Right. So at least uh, what we're going to show you now is how the hour day system works. And once again, we're not selling the hour day system because it's free. <laughs> okay, we're not asking for any money. It's completely a generic system for any MLM company. Correct. Uh, you can have it customized for your team. You, you, you yep. do do that. So we I do. mean, uh, so it, it can be done. Uh, that isn't free. No. Nope. Uh, but uh, it, but it can all be done by yourself as well. So you have the ability to get in the hour a day and make all the emails and change all the sales funnel pages, or you can 
gets to get it done with a little bit of money and yeah, yeah. And, and and or you, you can do it all it. yourself and then yeah. we can actually hook it up so that all of your team can grab your exact setup as well so there's lots of flexibility for a team leader to get their desired sales funnel all set up and then propagate that throughout their whole teams uh, and everyone gets to start for free uh, you can build a sizable business for free and then of course it becomes a big whopping thirty dollars a month when you get too big for the free version so it's not restricted in any way it just stops at two thousand communications a month right and I mean, 2,000 communications, you know, I mean, 500 prospects in your system talking to them on a weekly basis. If you put 10 people a day in as a result of your LinkedIn work, you'd have 300 people at the end of the month. You still wouldn't have gone through 2,000 communications. In month two, if you kept that process up, you might get close to 2,000. But here's the neat thing, Craig. If you're putting 10 prospects into your, through a LinkedIn process of qualified people and following up, you'd end up so busy with so much money being made, you'd be happy to give me $30 to keep it under control. Right, <laughs> and, and the great thing is for your downline, they can be doing it and you don't have to worry about them spending any money. There's no affiliate program attached to it, which oh. is really important for me. Yeah. I mean, how often are you hit up on uh you know on online on social media about the newest greatest i just talked about that the newest greatest prospecting system That's you right. know what let me show you how to make three hundred dollars five hundred dollars and it's only 183 dollars a month and Craig. i went on i clicked on the link and guess what there's an affiliate program right. attached to and it as yeah, well yeah, so my I mean, upline's getting 50 percent of my 183 bucks right. how about no affiliate program and not 183 bucks. I think that's well, so you can do it for free. I mean, you, you, oh, yeah, yeah, we do it for free because there's no affiliate, we don't pay anyone except us when you finally start paying money. So, so I mean, and 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 that's going to be a smaller percentage, it's not going to be everybody. We know that's most right. people are going to be able to build their business, are going to use it, but now you can at least use it for free. There's no money up front, use it for two, three, four, five months before it gets to the point where you right. got to be paying for and it. it. And if it is that big, you're making money, so you want to pay for and it. And if it isn't and you don't like it, well, then stop using it. Yeah.